bless our speaker, Father Austriaco, uh, that he may be used by the Lord to, uh, with his knowledge and wisdom, uh, to uh, tell us uh, the trends and what what we are to expect in the coming the coming weeks, the coming months, not to also uh, help us so that we as shepherds can also guide our priests, our religious and lay people. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. So without further ado, uh, we have uh, Father Ostriaco to, to speak before us. Good evening, Excellencies, and thank you for uh, once again for the invitation to speak before you, to give you a briefing and an update on the COVID-19 pandemic in our country. So I would like to share my screen. So what I would like to do for the first 15 minutes or so is to give you uh, an overview and an update on the pandemic. I will begin po, by explaining the, the Omicron variant so you understand what a variant is and why the variant was of of concern when it was first identified in South Africa two months ago. I will then give you the most up-to-date data on the clinical experience of COVID-19, again, with a focus first in South Africa, where it was um, discovered. We will then move to the experience of the United Kingdom. And finally, we will return to data that was just released by the Department of Health here in the Philippines, to give you a better picture of what is happening in the NCR. Because the, the current pandemic is currently centered on the NCR, but we are expecting the surge in the NCR to peak tomorrow or the day after. So next week, what we will see is we, we, expect, we are expecting numbers to begin to, to plunge uh, dramatically uh, in the NCR beginning next week. However, as I will show you, uh, the pandemic surge is now expanding beyond the NCR. It is currently accelerating in Region 3 and Region 4A, that is cent the central Luzon uh, provinces and Calabarzon. We are also seeing upticks in the Visayas in Mindanao. We therefore expect the surge of Omicron to expand dramatically in the Philippines in the next few weeks. Um, the surge will be coming down in the NCR, but many other regional surges are about two weeks behind the capital. And so what I would like to do is to give you a sense of what is happening now and what will happen in the next month or so in our beloved country. So I'm going to begin my presentation. So this is a picture. This is an animation of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which I begin all my lectures with. So you can see the virus that is triggering the COVID-19 pandemic. As my mother said to me yesterday, you know, one of the terrifying things about COVID-19 is we cannot see the enemy. Uh, this is the enemy. And I want you to see that the skin of the virus is covered with about 25 of these waving spike proteins. And the spike protein is the key that the virus will use to enter your body. And so uh, it's really important to keep track of that uh, spike protein. The spike protein is also the target of all the, most of the vaccinations that we have given throughout the world in the past year, which is why it is of a concern with Omicron. So different variants, you've heard of different variants. There is alpha and beta and delta, and now Omicron. They're the same virus. I want you to understand they're the same virus but they have different spike proteins. So they have different keys to enter your body. And some keys are better than other keys. And one of the things about the Omicron variant is that the key that the Omicron variant has to enter the cells in your nose is excellent. But thanks be to God, the key is not as good as entering the cells in your lungs, which is why Omicron is a milder form of the disease. Because what this, the symptomology of Omicron, as we will discuss later, is primarily a very bad cold. It's a very bad uh, cold where you have a sore throat. And that's because the virus heavily interacts with the cells in the top part of your, of your respiratory system. But if you, especially if you're vaccinated, 
it struggles to enter your lungs. So this is a picture po of the two spike proteins. The one on the left is Delta, and the one on the right is Omicron. All I want you to see is the red dots. And the red dots is the number of changes in the spike protein. So on the left-hand side, the Delta, you can see there's a bunch of red, but you see with the Omicron, there's a lot of red. And so when this was discovered in South Africa two months ago, scientists were, were very concerned that our immune system, the soldiers in our bodies that are trained to attack uh, SARS-CoV-2, the virus, by focusing their weapons on the spike protein would not be able to see the spike protein because the spike protein had changed enough. That was the concern. We know now that it has changed, uh, which is why uh, the number of people who have been vaccinated and boosted actually can get Omicron uh, because it has uh, changed it enough that the virus is able to infect vaccinated people, but it has not changed it too much that we are still able to fight off the attack. And we thank God for that. And you will see that this is actually a blessing in disguise. So this is um, the pandemic curve of South Africa. You need to, underst to understand Omicron. You need to understand the different surges, the different waves of variants in South Africa, and they also parallel the variants that we have experienced in the Philippines. So this original other variants, uh, this, we had the same experience in June and July of 2020. If you remember, that was the first ECQ uh, after we had lifted the original lockdown. We went into ECQ for about two weeks in, the, in Metro Manila. That was the first Variant. Then we had beta. Beta is uh, March and April of last year. And then we had the devastating delta in uh, July, August, and September. And, and, and so tragically, we lost so many Filipino lives in the delta surge. And I personally know so many people who died uh, because delta is a severe form of COVID-19. Now you will see this is the Omicron surge. Notice two things about the Omicron surge book. First of all, it is very high. It is higher than all of the other surges. And, we, and so the Omicron surge is very high. The red line is very high, but it is very narrow, which means that the number of days in the surge is very short. So if you look at the Delta surge in South Africa, it started in May and it ended in about October. So May, June, July, August, September. It's a four to five month surge in, for Delta. Uh, in Omicron, it was four weeks long. And we are experiencing the same reality in the Philippines, as I will show later. The surge is dramatic. It goes up very quickly. But we are expecting, uh, especially in the NCR next week, for the numbers to be dramatically falling. And I will explain why that is the case. So this is another version of those curves, but this time it is plotting three things. The number of people who were positive, the number of people who went to the hospital, and the number of people who died. Now notice, this is the Omicron surge. So the number of people who went to the hospital is quite high, but notice for the first time as compared to the other surges, the number of people who went to the hospital is lower. And even more important, the number of deaths is even lower than any of the other surges. This was the first indication that Omicron is milder than all of the other variants. Let me show you some of these numbers. I am a scientist, so I want to show you the numbers so you get a sense of to compare. So this is the data from South Africa. Uh, the province of Hauteng is the capital province of uh, South Africa with a population of 14 million people, very similar to the NCR. So you will see that in the Omicron, they had 133,000 positive cases. You compare that to Delta, which was 33,000. So the number of cases was dramatically higher. But notice the number of deaths, first of all. 
So out of 133,000, only 258 people died. That is incredibly small given the large number of people who got sick. Now you compare it to Delta. In Delta, you had 33,000 patients and we had 1,100 deaths. So fewer patients, higher deaths. But for Omicron, much higher patients, much lower deaths. Same thing with the number of people who were admitted to the hospital. So for the Omicron variant, only 5% of uh, people who were positive were admitted to the hospital as compared to Delta, as you can see, it was about 14%. So what we're seeing here is that there are fewer deaths and fewer hospitalizations. We now go to another report. This is the uh, report from the 49 acute care hospitals in South Africa. So now we look, when you go to the hospital, what happens in the hospital? So we're comparing th wave three, this is the Delta wave, and wave four, which is the Omicron wave. First of all, notice, Paul, the number of people who went to the hospital is fewer. 971 compared to 4,400. So first of all, the number of hospitals, hospitalization is down. What is significant, even more significant, is the number of people who needed oxygen was substantially fewer. So in the Delta wave, 3,260. So 75% of the people in the hospital needed oxygen. If you look at the Omicron wave, not only are there fewer people, only 18% of the people in the hospital needed oxygen. So what you're seeing is that it is much milder. So you have uh, fewer oxygen therapy, fewer mechanical ventilation. This is the machine that forces air into your lungs. And you have fewer Omicron patients in the ICU. We see the same thing in London, Paul. So we know that it's not just uh, something unique to South Africa. We see in London that the number of hospitalizations is significantly below the Delta surge. And the, the confinement period in England is also shorter. So let me show you what this means. The blue dots, Paul, are for Delta and the red dots are for Omicron. So if you're under 40 years old and you go to the hospital, if you had Delta, the median number of days in the hospital is about four days. But now you are only in the hospital three days. What is most significant is look at the Lolos and the Lolas, 80 plus. So if they got sick with Delta and they survived Delta in the hospital, they were staying median, that means 50%, were staying about 12 days. Now, with Omicron, there's only five days. So not only are they fewer going to the hospital, but they are spending fewer days in the hospital. And all of these point to a milder form of COVID-19. Now, we look at the, this is data that was released by the Department of Health of the Philippines yesterday. So you see the same thing, Paul. So if you compare, um, uh, the green is the number of positive cases in the NCR, very high. But notice the admission rate is very low. 98% uh, of all COVID-19 cases uh, currently, out of 200,000 in the entire country, are mild cases. That means they do not require, they do not get pneumonia, po, and they do not require hospitalization, uh, which is why it's mild. And the number of total severe and critical cases is very low. Now, uh, this is also from the National Capital Region. This is from the Department of Health. This is, I want you to get a sense. The red tells you what percentage of COVID patients were admitted to the hospital because of COVID. The yellow is what percentage of COVID patients entered the hospital for another reason and they discovered that that patient was positive. So for example, here in the Delta surge, which was uh, three months, four months ago, um, if you look at the COVID patients in our COVID beds in the capital region, 54% were admitted for COVID. They had to enter because they were very sick with COVID. But if you look today, if you look um, in the last few weeks, only about 
of the COVID patients in our hospitals actually entered because of COVID. The others, they had a heart attack. Po. They went to the hospital to deal with the heart attack and they found out that they were COVID. Or they had appendicitis po, and they needed the appendix to be removed. Or they were hit in a car accident. They were brought to the hospital and they were found out that they were COVID positive. So what you're seeing is that it's so mild that nearly 90% of our Kababayans in the hospital for COVID did not enter the hospital for COVID. Now, why is the Omicron variant milder? There are three reasons, Paul. The first is that uh, we now know that the Omicron virus can infect your, uh, the, the, the upper part of, of your body, the nose and your throat, but it struggles to enter the lungs, especially if you're vaccinated and boosted. That's the first reason why it's milder. Second reason, Paul, is because so many Filipinos are now vaccinated and hopefully boosted as compared to the Delta surge. And the vaccination is, in fact, protecting them against COVID-19. And even though, and we again, finally, uh, if you had COVID before, the, the previous COVID is protecting you against Omicron, even though in the United Kingdom, 10% to 15% are reinfections. So it's very important to know that it's not, you need to be vaccinated and boosted, even if you have, if you had COVID, because the, you need all of the protection you can get. So what are the symptoms of Omicron COVID? Just because I'm sure your, your people will ask you. So it's very hard to distinguish Delta COVID, COVID Omicron COVID, and the, and the flu. So most patients with Omicron COVID report colds and flu-like symptoms. But one thing that appears to be uh, distinctive is very bad sore throat. And there are fewer reports of loss of smell and taste. Symptoms will appear two to three days after exposure, which is much shorter than the incubation uh, a period for Delta, which was five days, and symptoms will resolve after five to seven days. Now, we, uh, this is the data from the United Kingdom. So booster shots protect against hospitalizations, both for Delta and Omicron. The reason why I have to bring Delta up is because... Uh, before the Omicron surge, there's mostly Delta, and the Delta is replacing Omicron. So in the NCR and now the NCR Region 3 and Region 4A, uh, Delta is being replaced by Omicron. But if you go to Cebu, it is still majority Delta, and the Omicron is arriving now. It has only begun, begun to surge within about two to three weeks from today. Omicron will dominate in Cebu as well. But right now, there is still significant Delta uh, moving around in the Visayas and Mindanao. So what should we expect? We should expect very high numbers of COVID-19 cases. We should not be scared, Paul, if the numbers are very high, because this is what we expect. But most of those cases will be mild, 98%. We expect fewer hospitalizations and death. This is true. And we should expect a rapid increase in cases, followed by a rapid deceleration of cases. Let me explain, Paul. The surge is like a fire in a forest. So when you start a fire in the forest, at the beginning, the fire is going to grow. And then at a certain point, it will spread throughout the forest, burning all the trees it can find. But when it runs out of trees, it will stop. It will stop suddenly. That is what we expect and what we are seeing around the world with Omicron. It's a very fast uh, fire. It will take two weeks. In the NCR, it took two weeks to peak, and it will probably take two weeks to plunge. So within one month, instead of three months or five months, the fire will be over. Uh, we should not expect a lockdown, uh, and we are given the peak of the surges in the capital, uh, we will not have a lockdown. I've been in conversation in the background with our government, national government, and I have, I have basically told them there is no reason for us to have a lockdown unless our hospitals are overwhelmed. And given that the numbers are peaking this weekend, we do not expect that to happen. 
However, in order to do this, we should expect to stay at home when we get sick. And Archbishop Sock uh, is currently in isolation in his home, uh, precisely because this is the standard uh, this is the standard of care for Omicron COVID in the Philippines and around the world. If you get sick, if you are positive, you must stay at home uh, to isolate yourself from people around you, number one. Uh, for most of us, we will take paracetamol for about five days. Uh, we have to watch out for um, developments in our health that, that will signal we have to go to the hospital. This is primarily for anything to do with your breathing. If your breathing is affected by Omicron, you must go to the hospital because what that means is the virus has entered your lungs. And if it has entered your lungs, then you are at higher risk for severe uh, COVID. So you need to go to the hospital if you have any breathing issues. Uh, in addition, you should have an oximeter, which is a, a very simple device to measure, measure oxygen in your blood. In fact, Quezon City is, is handing out 25,000 oximeters to all positive residents. Uh, in order to make sure Paul, that your oxygen does not fall below 94%, uh, if it starts to fall below 94%, that is another reason why you should seek medical help in the hospital. And we should expect the surge to move from the NCR outward to the rest of the country. And that is what we're seeing. So this is the, a graph of the surge in the NCR. So for the first three weeks, the numbers of cases were going very up. And the black line is an exponential curve. Uh, that is a mathematical description for how fast the virus is spreading. The doubling time was about two days, which is a classic Omicron signature. As of yesterday, Paul, the doubling time has been increased to five days. Uh, you can see that over the last week, the surge has slowed in Manila. Instead of going up, it has plateaued. And uh, this is just to give you a comparison of the Omicron surge and the Delta surge in Metro Manila. So you can see very rapid increase in cases for the Omicron surge, but you can see that it is beginning to slow down and to peak. And we expect this to peak this weekend and it will begin to dive just as fast as it went up if, it, if we follow South Africa and London. Compare that, Paul, to the Delta surge uh, in July and August and September. You can see it lasted three to four months. We expect the surge in the capital to last only about a month. So by the end of January, the number should be down. But what we are seeing is it is now spreading. So uh, this is region, uh, the NCR is in red. You can see it is accelerating. Um, it, will, it has now peaked. It should start coming down. The DOH has not published the region-specific data properly. Uh, region 4A is now peaking. So you can see it is following, and Region 3 is following behind. And all of the other regions are now following. So what will happen is you imagine a, uh, a stone dropping into a, into, a, into a pond of water. The waves will spread out from the center, and the center is the NCR. And so what is happening now is the virus is spreading. It will spread in Luzon first. Um, it is struggling to go to the Visayas because Mactan International Airport was affected by Super Typhoon Odette. And because Super Typhoon Odette uh, affected the Visayas, Paul, very many Filipinos did not travel between Metro Manila and the Visayas in the way they would have done in the past which is why if you look region six and region seven, which are typically very high after Metro Manila are still quite low, but unfortunately the numbers as of the last few days suggest that they are beginning to increase. So we, will, we expect the surge to accelerate in the Visayas next week, Paul. It will last again about one month. Unfortunately, many of our people are going to suffer especially those who are unvaccinated, Paul. Those who are unvaccinated will still be hit very hard with Omicron. Those who are vaccinated uh, will be relatively safe. 
those who are vaccinated and boosted are even more protected po. So, uh, so personally, Excellencies, if you have not been boosted, I encourage you to receive your booster as soon as possible because it will take two weeks for the protection to uh, settle into your body. And if you are a uh, shepherd of one of our dioceses that has not yet experienced the surge, the surge will arrive in your diocese in, in the next two weeks. So we want you to be as protected as possible. So how do we protect ourselves? Uh, notice our children are not vaccinated. So what we are doing uh, around the country is we are building cocoons around our children. We are asking all parents and all adults who interact with children to be vaccinated and boosted as soon as possible so that they will protect the children. Children do get Omicron, but it is relatively mild. We have to wear masks for and we have to upgrade to medical grade mask if we can afford. This is the, the KN95 um, mask because Omicron is so transmissible. Of course, observe all minimum public health standards, avoiding crowded areas. And if we have symptoms, we have to assume we are positive. So this is what I tell people during a surge. Um, if you have any symptoms associated with uh, a cold or a flu during a COVID surge, 95% probability you have COVID. Uh, you can get tested if a test is available, but for the most part, uh, people just assume that they have COVID and they stay home. You have to stay home if you are vaccinated for seven days. If you are unvaccinated, you have to stay for 14 days uh, because it takes longer for you to remove the virus because your body is not as protected. So, um, but I, again, you know, um, one of the things we have to realize is that Omicron is a blessing in disguise. It is the beginning of the end of the pandemic. Why do I say this? Because in 1918, the Spanish flu pandemic, which killed 50 to 100 million people. So uh, we believe that uh, COVID has killed approximately 20 million people. Uh, the official numbers are underestimated because many people in the developing world died from COVID without report, proper reporting. So the worldwide death toll is about 18 to 20 million for the COVID pandemic. The Spanish flu was 50 to 100 million. And the virus then was called H1N1. And there was no vaccinations in 1918. So in 1918, the pandemic ended when the virus mutated to become mild, which is why the Omicron is a good sign that it is a milder form of COVID. And what it will do is it will go around the world and it will increase immunological memory. Let me explain what I mean here, Paul. If you are unvaccinated and you survive Omicron, because unfortunately Omicron will still kill and it will preferentially kill unvaccinated Filipinos. But if you are unvaccinated and you survive, you will develop antibodies against Omicron and Delta. And Delta is the severe form. If you are vaccinated and you survive, you develop antibodies against Omicron, Beta, Delta, Alpha, and the original Wuhan strain. So all of your antibodies become super immune. This is called super immunity. I would like to emphasize, though, this, that it's still very important to encourage our people to get vaccinated and boosted because if not, some of them will die. Uh, because even though Omicron is mild, it is milder than Delta, it is still a killer. Uh, finally, I would end with this note. Um, we also are awaiting the arrival of two antiviral drugs. Uh, Molnupiravir is already available in the Philippines. It has a 30% effectiveness rate of preventing you to going to the hospital if you develop COVID. And we are waiting for Paxlovid, which is a 90% effectiveness rate against development of severe forms of COVID. Uh, once this arrives, it will dramatically change our, the way we handle COVID because even if you have comorbidities or if you're a senior citizen, if you are positive, we will give you these drugs. 
It is a, a drug you will take pill form po at home for five days. And it, you either will take two pills a day or four pills a day, depending upon the company and the brand that you buy. And uh, you will just take it at home. And it costs around about, uh, I've understood, uh, several thousand pesos. But if it keeps you from the hospital, it will still be relatively cheaper than if you are ad admitted. Po. So thank you so much uh, for your uh, attention. And 